My name is Melina Duarte and I come from Portugal, from Instituto Superior de Engenharia do Porto, and I'm going to talk to you about formative assessment in e-learning and monitoring students' learning. So, the Bologna process uh, tells us about student-centered approaches, about using them for teaching and learning, and also about having learners actively engage in uh, their own learning. To do this, students must take responsibility for their own learning and learn in a self-directed way. And that requires learner autonomy. Uh, but learner autonomy also requires something else, that is opportunities, uh, and that's the role of the teacher, creating these opportunities for learner autonomy. And uh, learning management systems can be uh, helpful in this way to create opportunities to promote uh, learner autonomy. So, the objective is to check if formative self-assessment activities implemented using an LMS, in this case Moodle platform, can be used as a learning monitoring tool. And why this concern? Why are we concerned with this? Um, self-assessment is said to be the main factor that influences academic achievement and it is also very important for learner autonomy. To be uh, an autonomous learner you must know how to assess what you learn. You cannot be autonomous if you can't do this. So, uh, we implement self-assessment quizzes and we are doing this for some time now and I'd like to talk to you a little about this. So, we have lots of students. We are talking about 400, 500 students. And we all know it's common knowledge that continuous assessment is a way to improve students' learning. But if you have 500 students, it's very difficult in uh, conventional ways to continuously assess the students because you have to check if their answers are correct and give them feedback. So, uh, platforms like Moodle can be helpful because you can make quizzes in these platforms and it, uh, the students can, can get self-assessment from these quizzes and uh, the teacher's workload is much smaller in this case. But our students, uh, I don't know how do your students react to this, our students, um, they like that everything they do uh, counts for the final grade. They don't like to do activities that doesn't count for the final grade. But you, if you are going to grade all these quizzes, you have to have some concerns with uh, security. Uh, they have to be in a classroom, um, responding, answer, answering the quizzes in a, a classroom, in a controlled environment. You have to have computers for all the students. When you have 500, uh, it's difficult. The conventional way is difficult, but this way is also very difficult because you don't have 500 computers at the same time and they cannot answer this at home because you don't know if it's them <coughs> that uh, is answering the, the quizzes. So, what if these quizzes uh, were uh, not a part of the final grade? So, take the element of the final grade of the equation. What if these quizzes, the only purpose was formative assessment? So, this, the final grade was removed from the equation. All the answers did not have an impact on the final grade. It was not mandatory. They only answered if they felt the need 
uh, to do so. And so we are talking about formative assessment, real formative assessment. The only purpose of these quizzes was for students to check if they were effectively learning, not a grade. We use multiple choice questions for these quizzes and we use the special type, I don't know if you know this, general implicit solution questions. So we did this with the second year, first semester, curricular unit. It's the first cycle of an engineering degree. In this year, almost 500 students were enrolled and uh, uh, we divided them in three groups. There were the students uh, that enrolled for the first, the first time in this course and they attended the classes uh, during the daytime. The students also during the day, but that were, uh, they have failed in the previous year at this course and there were students that attended uh, classes at night. There were some concerns, ethical concerns. If you are going to do an experiment, you must uh, take some care because students are not guinea pigs. So uh, We uh, felt that the students, if this went terribly wrong, that the students that were more able to, to deal with this problem were the daytime students that have uh, previously attended this course. And so we propose to these students, this group only, to attend blended learning and we implemented it like this. Theoretically class, there weren't any face-to-face -face theoretically classes, there were videos online and worksheets that they use while uh, viewing the videos. And then there were the self-assessment quizzes that they could optionally uh, answer after viewing the videos to check if they had understand what was going on on the videos and they get immediate feedback from the self-assessment quizzes and this allows them to went to tutorial sessions if they felt a need. If there was something that they felt they didn't understand, they could see the teacher in the tutorial sessions. So, more, specific, more specifically, uh, we check if the completion of the self-assessment activities favored the approval in the curricular unit if the final grades of the students, uh, I remind you that this was not mandatory, so there were students that did not do the self-assessment quizzes. And so we um, check if those who did the self-assessment, uh, the grades were different, in this case better than those who didn't. And finally, if there were a correlation between the self-assessment grades this grade was merely an indication for the quiz. It was not a part of the final grade. So was there any correlation between these grades from self-assessment quizzes that were not mandatory, uh, that didn't count for the final grade and the final grade itself? So this is what, this third was what we were primarily looking for. So. For the first one, if it favored, this was the group, that group I showed you, that attended classes during the day and had enrolled in previous years and not got approved. This was uh, the group that was doing the B learning. And so we find out that approval was not independent of self-assessment, that if a student did the self-assessment, it was more likely, likely that he got approval in this curricular unit. The final grades, they were different. Uh, there was 
statistically different um, differences between the average final grade of the two groups. The groups that the group that did the final uh, that did the self-assessment quizzes and the group that didn't, and the group that did had better grades. And finally, about the correlation. Was there a correlation? If you ask students to do a quiz if they want to do it and tell them that it has no part in the final grade, how much will they invest in these quizzes? Because this was what we were looking for. And so we find out that the self-assessment grade, because there was a grade, and it was merely an indication for them of how well they did in these quizzes, is a significant predictor of the final grade. And this was a good correlation. It was high. So, uh, in this way, if a student had um, a grade in the self-assessment quiz that was low, this tells the professor that it's likely that he will get a low grade in the final uh, exam. And this is very important. Because this means that these self-assessment quizzes can be used as a monitoring tool for the students and for the teacher. Because there is this correlation. If I'm a student and I'm doing these quizzes and I don't do well on the quizzes, this means that I'm going to struggle with the final exam. And the teacher can identify topic subjects where students are having difficulties immediately and can act immediately. immediately. And these quizzes, there's not much workload for the teacher involved in these quizzes. Once it is done, you can use it uh, next year and next year and make slight changes. So it's not a very high workload process. So, uh, learning management systems allows the use of formative assessment as a monitoring tool. And it can be used in blended learning, but also in any conventional uh, learning environment. You can have face-to-face -face classes and uh, propose to the students this kind of activities. Because in my classes, when at the end of the class I ask, is there any questions? Do you want to ask uh, anything? They never have questions. But when they, afterwards, they are going to, to answer the quiz, they find out that there's something that was not uh, completely understood. So this improves the communication and you can give feedback and have from feedback from the students. Because my, dif my difficulty as, te as teacher is to get feedback from my students. It's everything always is all right, only at the end, at the final exam. So, the problem we had that tried to, to solve with this solution is the, to have large number of students that uh, proves to be very difficult to implement other uh, methods of formative assessment.